Leather Patches. So today we're making these tiny blue leather patches. We're also staining them this amazing blue color. Check them out. Okay, here's the cricket cutting the leather patches and me removing them from the cricket mat after they've been cut. Wow, look at those little tiny patches. I think I'm ready to cut them out now. I'm gonna have to use my X-Acto knife and trim all the way through so I can free these little mini leather patches and get them ready for some leather dye. Make sure to put on some nitrile gloves to protect your hands from getting the dye on them. prefer to use nitrile gloves over latex as latex will irritate some people's skin. Look at the cute little octopus and the adorable little chill logo. We're going to be making these leather patches a nice blue color today. But instead of using blue right out of the bottle, we're going to add in a little bit of yellow. And if you guys remember the old commercial, yellow and blue might green. So we're going to kind of go back and forth between blue and green and find a nice teal color that we can mix. Now you'll see me adding a little bit of blue to a lot of yellow to get a nice green color. Now I might be thinking that's a little bit too green, so instead of adding more yellow in a different container, I'm just going to add a little bit more blue into this mix so the color goes from green to a more blue-green or teal color. And after I've saturated my Q-tip, use a new q-tip to continue mixing as once the q-tips get saturated with a solid color they might not mix as precisely as you want they'll introduce some of that color back in now if, once you get a, col a color you like and you're going to do larger areas you might want to use an eyedropper and figure out how many milliliters you're gonna need of each color in order to make that perfect mix. I'm just experimenting here, so. And as I add more blue back into this green mixture, I'll sort of put a little swatch streak on my cardstock down there, just to sort of see what color um, I'm at at that current time and to kind of see how it's changing over time as I add a little bit more in. It's kind of hard to see off to the side because they're all so dark, but I must be getting frustrated and I just poured a lot of blue into this mix. I felt like it was getting stuck green and me adding a drop of blue back in at a time just wasn't enough. So what we learned from this test is I added way too much yellow in the beginning. A, a little bit of yellow goes apparently a long way. I was thinking the opposite just by working with paints. When you Usually when you add in a blue like that, it really only need a tiny bit of it. It usually stretches way far. But 
in this case, we're just trying to change the tint of the blue a little bit. <clears throat> so it doesn't look so out of the tube. Let's zoom in a little closer and take a look. Now let's start by using some custom made or custom mixed leather dye. I mix some blue and some yellow together to get this nice blue green or teal color. Let's start with the chill patch. Now I designed these in Adobe Illustrator and sized them small enough that I could cut them out on scrap pieces of leather. I'm experimenting with some typography and seeing how small we can make uh, fonts in leather. Now these are pretty tiny patches, so I was able to get the word chill in a cursive font fairly small, which was nice. It's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see how small I can produce um, legible font on a piece of leather. Now, you can see me doing the edges and trying to be consistent as I can with the application of this leather dye. This goes on a lot. It dries a lot faster than, say, leather stain and, and, and that I've used in some of the other tutorials. This leather dye is fast drying, and oh, you'll see me move on to the octopus, and I just think this this green is a it's a nice color, especially for the the octopus. If something says underwater about it. And I make sure I don't apply it too dark all at once. I want to see a little bit of the natural blue and green gradations happening here. Um, I just don't want it to look straight blue out of the tube, so... I found if you go light, you can do a couple coats with this leather dye, and it, it doesn't... You don't want to apply it so thick in the beginning. I'd like to experiment with, with cutting this with some um, windseed oil or some other kind of liquid that we could stretch and make it a little bit more, um, you know, translucent. I'd also like to experiment with, um, you know, I guess dip dyeing some of these. Um, you need a little bit more dye, but if you were going to be making maybe 10 or 20 of these, you'd maybe want to stain them prior to cutting them completely out. Um, it all depends, you know, I wasn't planning to all these, the holes in these, um, you, you'd want to apply your dye after any holes were, were poked or all through, so take that into consideration, but, you know, now I'm getting thicker coverage with just some straight blue in the middle. You know, the as the light hits these, you're going to see some blue and green, and it's sort of the intent for this this underwater um, sort of motif. And I'm hoping to perfect a, a bluish green where it, it has some ocean vibes, and it also will carry through to um, some foliage and things. So I'm working my way through the colors. I've dyed uh, another wallet a bluish color, and it, I'm really liking the blue. I'm just trying to work out the perfect teal that my my wife will approve on. <laughs> so. Then after you feel like the top is saturated or you have full coverage and you don't see any raw leather, then you want to work your way to the sides of these. And, you know, if you're going to be applying a, a leather patch on, say, a hat or a bag or even a pair of truck tail or converses or some roller skates, um, you'd want to make sure that the edges were not only slicked smoothly, but were also dyed completely. I don't like seeing any raw edges, raw leather color on the sides. I like to make the, the sides a little bit darker. Um, but yeah, this is why I'm wearing gloves. <laughs> a lot of the times you'll see me not use gloves when I'm dealing with some stain, perhaps, because it's a little bit easier to take off the hands. Um, if I'm doing any small piece or the size of pieces where I know I'm, it's inevitable but that I'm going to have to pick up the piece, I'll certainly be wearing some gloves. Now I suppose you can set these in a vertical fashion, some kind of drying rack or jig to apply the stain on the sides, but I don't know, I just sort of like to spin them with my hands and work the work the dye into the sides that way. 
and after maybe 10 minutes or so, I start taking off any excess. It's, the leather is going to be saturated and it's going to, it's already sucked up all the dye that it's going to. So anything else on top is now just sort of getting in your way. And we want to not have any dye left on the surface once we're going to apply some of the oil. Now be very careful, you probably shouldn't use the caps as stirring basins because then you have to run outside like I'm doing right now and dispose of them into the garage sink where I have a little a little canister where I dispose of, you know, where I clean my paint brushes and things like that. But you wouldn't want to dump those capfuls of mixed dye back into the containers because you would you'd infect the entire container and you wouldn't want to do that. So there I'm back in with my caps cleaned out or most of the way. One day I'll shoot an outside video and you can take a look uh, at the garage and see where I paint. Now I dispose of some of the some of the oil and some of the acrylic um, gray water, as it were. Also, I always like to use some piece of cardstock. I like rigid paper. I don't like to use newspaper if I can help it. It's something that's easy to fold up and make a little package out of and throw away. There's nothing worse than having some of this dye drip out. Um, I also don't put this into the regular garbage can, um, especially this dye. Um, it doesn't have a particular odor, but um, I found that it just seems like a little bit stronger than, say, the leather stain. And if I have a rag with some stain on it, I don't mind keeping it in the, um, in the home garbage can. But with this dye, I like to go make sure I take this out right away and properly dispose of all the little rags. And now I love to just use paper towels. Now they have a nice abrasive quality and you'll start seeing them shine up quite noticeably. Um, I suppose you could use, you know, other, other means, but it's just a nice piece of cheap 800 grit where you can swirl, go a little bit faster, try to abide by the, the, the leather grain. You'll kind of feel how it, how it wants to be worked. You're just making sure that that rag or that paper towel stays clean. You don't want to see a lot of blue coming up at this point. And you'll feel it as you, if you're used to sanding anything, you'll use, you, you can kind of feel the abrasions getting knocked down and you can visibly see um, the, sh the shine come up and as you go faster the shine really starts happening you can you know use other buffing means if you were going to do a bigger project but this is all just hand work just as a test here but you can get pretty good with just your hand and a piece of paper towel you can see me going a little faster here i like to alternate my circular directions just to make sure that Every every little area is, is knocked down, especially on the octopus when you have more little pieces of detail. Now that was a piece of art that I created in Adobe Illustrator, this little octopus, and to get it sub two inches tooled on leather, I really had to simplify the vector work. Um, I probably could have simplified it a little bit further, but when you're tooling leather, um, the designs can't be too detailed, but I had a good time experimenting with topography. I love how the chill turned out. It's, you can see what I mean about the, the sheen after just paper towel. It has a great look to it. It's not real consistent. I like that blue color. Yeah, we're getting closer to what I think my wife likes to figure out. Six, mil, six to one milliliters of blue to yellow, perhaps. Something like that. And you can see that the stitching looks a little close to the edges, so I couldn't sew these on a hat, but they're also a little bit small for the size. So you have to really fine tune the stitch spacing for appropriate sized objects. And look how small these are. Really tiny, tiny. 
They work great on a hat, you know, on like a work shirt or a jacket, windbreaker kind of thing. I like them on the bottom of shorts, um, on bags. Um, I also like to, you know, saddle stitch these together. Put a kind of a, a metal hanger to, you know, in between them. So sew that inside so you can hang them on a bag or make a cute little luggage tag or something out of these. In the next video, I'll show you how to actually apply these on a hat where you're not going to be necessarily saddle stitching like normal. We're going to be you know, stitching the same kind of twine so you can, so you can see it, but the, the back's a little different. And similar techniques. Oh, now you'll see the, the shine really pop. One of my favorite products is the, the mink oil. It's a natural oil for leather. It's been around forever. If you ever remember polishing shoes or shining shoes, then you can remember mink oil. It has a glorious smell to it. Like I said, it's natural. And the leather sucks up the mink oil like no other. Any kind of synthetic um, oils, it just it sits on the surface, to be honest. This really penetrates. So it's, that's why people that tool leather love the mink oil, because it really penetrates into those grooves. And you don't really want to see the top looking very shiny, but then inside of the tooled areas, it's all rough. And you know, we want to keep this as conditioned as possible. And I don't wait that long before I put my mink oil on it. I take a, a little color comes back off with it, but and look at how yeah, look at the difference now once, it's, once the zoom kicks in. Wait for it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's what just a little bit of mink oil applied, right? About a half hour after the dye was applied. Look at the shine. Yeah, that's great. A little chill mini leather patch and a little octopus leather patch. Mini, mini, mini. Small as I can go with the cricket while still retaining any kind of legibility. Yeah, this would be cool if you put that octopus on a hat for your, your fishing friend. And then, yeah, don't forget to apply some leather polish to keep it protected over time.